I want to bring in right now Dr. Lewis Potter is there, Chief of Radiation Medicine at Northwell Health. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. And of course, we don't know the exact type of cancer right now, but when you get diagnosed with cancer, it's never necessarily a good thing. What is your maybe initial reaction to hearing this news of King Charles III? So I think I think just like you and and everybody else, I think we we have to feel sort of sorry for him in the fact that he's been diagnosed with cancer. Right? Nothing nothing is more distressing for a patient, regardless of whether they're king or or just anyone, than being told that you have cancer. And um, and so we we certainly hope for the best for him, as we do with uh, any cancer patients uh, who are recently diagnosed. And uh, we do know that the reason he went to the hospital in the first place was a prostate enlargement. And when maybe a doctor uh, like you kind of looks into this, are there certain areas that potentially prostate cancer, potentially other types of cancer, maybe is there something that leads along those lines and, and leads to this diagnosis? Well, so I think we, we want to be clear that we don't know exactly what type of cancer the, the king has. And um, it could really be anything. Okay. Um, in the workup of uh, the surgery that he had uh, for the benign prostate, it's possible that they discovered something at that particular time or at the time of the procedure for the benign prostatic hypertrophy, they may have discovered something. Uh, but because you need to have anesthesia in advance of a, of a minor surgical procedure that he had for the prostate, it's likely that something was picked up uh, uh, in advance of that surgery. All right. And, and, and when you're talking about benign and, and people don't necessarily know these terms, when you say benign, maybe what does that mean exactly? So apparently, and, and we've been told that uh, the king had enlargement of the prostate, which is a benign enlargement of the prostate that impacts uh, patient's ability to urinate. Uh, and he had a procedure to, to relieve the obstruction of that benign or non-cancerous growth of the prostate. Um, and, and it was probably during the workup uh, in order to receive anesthesia that the cancer may have been discovered. He still went ahead and had the procedure done, which was necessary to relieve the obstructive problems that he was uh, he was undergoing. But uh, uh, but now he'll have to deal with the diagnosis of cancer workup and treatment. Yeah, and obviously, like you said, we don't necessarily want to speculate because we don't know the exact type of cancer uh, that it is. But King Charles III. 75 years old, and we know as you kind of grow older, potentially cancer and cancerous different uh, impacts different people's lives. Can you talk a little bit about that and just the demographics as a 75 year old person more likely to get cancer? How does the, that line up? So we do know that um, based on press release or at least information that the BBC has released that this is not a prostate cancer. Uh, which is really what you would think, given the fact that he had a procedure on the prostate. And at times, the discovery of prostate cancer can occur when you're having treatment for relief of the benign or, or the non-cancerous growth of the prostate. But then you, you look at sort of the typical cancers of, uh, of patients who are older, lung cancer, colon cancer, clearly come up as, as number one and number two. Uh, and, um, and, and so it could have been uh, either of those two. Given the proximity of the prostate, maybe a rectal cancer, if it was something geographic in the sense that it was in proximity to the prostate. But, but again, we don't know that information. So we would think lung cancer, prostate, and a 75-year-old male are the, the most predominant types of cancers, but it could be others. Gotcha, yeah, and we don't know the exact one in particular, but in particular, maybe different cancers. Are different cancers maybe more life-threatening than others? Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely. There's prognostic factors related to each of the cancers. We know prostate cancer is, is something that generally doesn't impact overall mortality to the extent that, say, a lung cancer does. We know that colon cancer, if caught early, and the importance then of colonoscopy for purposes of screening is, is a curative cancer. So um, 
when looking at overall mortality, meaning the chance of, of, of the king dying from this, we, we really have no information. Right. And not only that, there are some cancers that may be curable, but in a more advanced form may not be. So again, we're just going to have to wait on the news of uh, the specific type of cancer and, and how aggressive or not it is. Yeah, and of course, he said he remains wholly positive in his statement that he looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. And so many people directly, indirectly impacted by cancer and the initial diagnosis, if you catch it early, certainly the odds go up as well. And His Majesty talked about the fact that he chose to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation, also may assist public understanding for those around the world who are affected by cancer. Maybe in terms of just high-profile people like the King, telling people to go get checked. How much of an impact does that have on the community as a whole that, that King Charles can go through this and other people can get checked to potentially prevent something in the future? Yeah, no, I think it's an important message and, and I applaud the, the, the King for, for, uh, for putting it out there as such because screening is, is critical. And we know that in, in the post-COVID era, that screenings for cancers have, have gone down. So whether it's uh, in, in women, breast uh, mammography for, uh, for men, it's a PSA for prostate cancer, for colonoscopies, uh, for everybody over the age of 45. Uh, these are important aspects uh, that the, the general population can take away because as you noted, early detection of cancers is associated with a better outcome. Uh, additionally, I'd like to just say that in general, we're doing better in terms of treating cancer over the last 10 to 20 years. And recent data that was released uh, of the risk of dying from cancer uh, continues to go down a couple of percentage points each year. So whether it's a combination of screening, whether it's a combination of improved lifestyles, or better treatments, whether they're surgical radiation or, or chemotherapy or immunotherapy type, type of approaches, um, the mortality of cancer is something that's going down over time, and, and that is a good thing. Yeah, those small percentages can make a huge dif difference uh, as well. Uh, and we're all watching this kind of unfold from afar as we kind of just learn through this, through those statements as well. Dr. Lewis Potters, uh, any other words that I, that I might not have got to? Any more notes that you want to let our national audience know before I let you go? No, we just, you know, I think just like everybody else, we wish the best for the king, as we do with, with any cancer that's, uh, any, any patient that's newly diagnosed with cancer and is going through the anxiety uh, of having to, to deal with this and, and to have to manage it. So uh, we'll just hope for the best uh, for him uh, going forward. Yeah, we wish him the best and the whole royal family as a whole, as it impacts so many there in the United Kingdom. Uh, and I don't think the American people have a full grasp on just how it impacts uh, everyone over there. All right, Dr. Lewis, Dr. Lewis Potters, thank you again for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you.